What's up gamers? Matt Nair Extreme here. Okay, so Apple had their watchOS and iOS event yesterday and we need to talk about the gaming updates that they actually shared. Now, first off, I play mobile games, probably far more than I play AAA games on consoles. But those games are pretty much chess, Pokemon Go. Secondly, there exists only one Apple device in my entire household. And that's my wife's iPhone Pro 13 Max, I think, which is pretty much being used as a webcam right now. And finally, I use this device mainly to remote play from my consoles. Granted, I just installed Final Fantasy Ever Crisis that I should probably actually check out before I cloud stream again using uh, the PlayStation or Xbox app. I'm saying all of this to kind of set a preface um, that I was never a hardcore mobile gamer. Um, my mobile devices was simple, a medium to kind of pass the time, not necessarily for mobile gaming. But I think that might have changed. Apple's 2023 iOS and watchOS event led on to kind of highlight the newest um, Pro model lineups of the iPhone with their new A17 Bionic chip which is kind of being highlighted here. Um, now, one of the things they kind of go on to speak a little bit about is actually their onboard, um, the onboard ray tracing, which is kind of like an improvement over their previous ray tracing, where it was actually more focused on um, software rendering. Now, one of the things you kind of have to give Apple um, props for is that they really and truly try to pioneer innovation. Even if it's a case where innovation is already there before, what they're trying to do is to say, okay, how can we do it the Apple way? How can we make it even better? And then make everybody else follow us rather than it seeming or it comes across as if we are the one following them. They kind of go into a little bit of a technical details in terms of all the improvements their A17 Pro trip has done. And they it's again to kind of set up the innovation as to what it can do and how this chip with its improved CPU and GPU and other um, sections of that nano chip really and truly are going to lend to improved performance, improved um, overall just improved performance of their mobile devices but directly leading into improved gaming experience. So. As they kind of give a this demonstration, they're speaking, which is kind of li a little bit funny, speaking about um, increased speeds with the, um, the implementation of USB-C, um, but it kind of then leads right into the GPU aspect um, of improved graphics performance. And again, this is where we come in. When they're speaking about their Pro Class GPU here, it really and truly is something that they're kind of looking at revolution being revolutionary being top of the line something that's never really and truly been done in a smartphone device now again i still believe that's a little bit um, um controversial because i do think there's a lot of mobile gaming devices out there that have kind of set um, a precedent but nothing really and truly is going to be recognized as much as apple is going to be recognized here no, of course, they say it's going to have six cores, Apple design, of course. They want to kind of step it up there, so we see a little bit more. But then they dive right into ray tracing. As I kind of mentioned here, um, they were kind of looking at the fact that, you know, before um, we have a lot of games there that are without ray tracing, especially on mobile devices. And last year they were introducing ray tracing, but they wanted, they looked at it from the aspect of software rendering. Now, here they're kind of describing in you know, a ray tracing when you speak about the volumetric lighting and stepping away from cube maps but when they kind of looked at comparing an 8 fps game to a 30 fps game from a software based ray tracing to hardware based ray tracing i'm like how many people would are actually playing games at 8 fps but again it's just to kind of probably highlight for person who don't fully fully understand um ray tracing and its impact now when you're looking at the expectation of four times performance ray tracing this is kind of like stepping setting a precedence now and really and truly i think 
everything that they're trying to say is that this new chip is going to be enabled here for increased graphics performance and for developers to kind of dive in and implement a lot of things that probably wouldn't have been possible on other devices again no starting with the iPhone so gaming here the whole gaming section was really and truly impressive um, you have to give um, Apple credit where credit is due um, Apple knows how to put on a presentation and make everything look cool um, this again is kind of like me when you look compare like a top-down isometric game that's what you expect when you go on when you hold an iPhone and you can see as a compared to when I'm using remote play on via my PS app um, or Xbox app but now you have a wide variety of probably games here um, when you're now focusing on like the um, Apple Arcade which has gotten really and truly good with a lot of development developer support just because of the Apple ecosystem being so large so if you kind of step away from those microtransactions mini games um, we all know that we've there's for a very long time now there's been really and truly huge performance and huge leaps in mobile games such as these um, first party um, or even third party view um, games so they're highlighting division here and of course that's something that's definitely played Hunger Star Rail I really and truly love this because graphically this looks amazing on the iPhone when you kind of speak about some of these animated games they really and truly pop on the iPhone screen now when we look at like things like Genshin Impact is kind of like the same thing and I've been playing like Tower Fantasy and that was that's something that I would love to see as well um, coming to these games um, coming to the iPhone so really and truly kind of play those games you, the colors really truly pop but now when you kind of see Kandasan kind of step in and speak about tr real AAA games that have been remade and gotten a, a lot of um, critical acclaim now coming to the iPhone and there's a key difference here between the, the, the division game that they were showing before as opposed to the AAA titles such as Resident Evil which they go on to say is expected later this year uh, this is going to be a true test if you realize there's no actual touch controls when you're playing those games games like Genshin Impact or the division here you can actually see the touch goal the, the, the touch controls so you have a better understanding that these games are actually being rendered in engine on these devices so the real test hasn't really been shown as yet um, I do think it's a little bit of a trap and I hope that it's not as misleading because this looks really fluid and really great for Resident Evil 4 and they kind of go on to say that the new Assassin's Creed Mirage is also coming to the iOS device um, most likely early 2024 so these games will be the true test of mobile gaming on an iOS device and the expectation here is that the A17 Pro chip um, will actually enable that so with all this dedicated section for mobile gaming and the, you know the headline in the AAA titles such as RE4 Remake coming later this year and later on for Assassin's Creed um, again just keep a close eye on the gameplay that is being shown in these when it comes down to touchpads um, so it's still kind of up in the air what the true mobile gaming experience will be and to be honest this is the second time I have ever uttered the words I want an iPhone the last time was for the iPhone 14 Pro Max um, I love the dynamic island but as many said it's best for you to wait until next year and I'm sure many have heard that before as well well now here we are Apple has done it again um, there is like dangling a little carrot of features we all would want at the base model but as expected the best in Apple's new lineup of iPhone has the best features and of course cost north of a thousand dollars this dev um, device is coming in at about uh, $1,199 and really and truly this uh, that's just the base because there are going to be other things you probably need to add on top of that um, so the question is really and truly simple is it worth it to get the iPhone Pro 15 um, or iPhone 15 Pro Max just for the sole purpose of having a, a, a better gaming experience for 
I would say probably far more optimized than any other gaming device right now. Um, for me, I'm looking more as like a trading, like a middle ground, like a trading option since I skipped out on last year's model. Um, but how about you? Are you a mobile gamer? Are you interested in Apple's new lineup? And even more so, are you planning to check out the iPhone Pro Max models for the 15 series to kind of boost your gaming experience? Please like, subscribe, leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. Um, and if you want, you can let me know what you think about the other devices as well, that um, the other features that they have brought as well. But it's definitely something to keep a close eye on because I do think this is going to um, push the industry a little bit further. Apple really and truly might have done it again. I would be really, really pleased to have one of these new devices to kind of test out and do comparisons. Who knows, maybe Digital Foundry would actually drop in an, uh, a comparison for many devices playing the same game and you see an iPhone 15 Pro Max right there. Uh, speaking into the bean, thanks for your time. Thanks for passing through if you're watching this. Really, truly appreciate it. Um, check, feel free to check out our other videos. All the best. Matt Near Extreme here. Out.